9 Financial Goals to Achieve Before You're 30 Most difficult part of being an adult, to which all the adults will agree, is managing finances. And most of the adults find it very difficult to get through with this. But there are some tricks of the trade that you can apply to achieve that financial freedom, with planning and execution, obviously. So in this video, we are going to reveal few goals that once you set your eyes on before your 30s, you can achieve any financial milestone. Knowing is half the battle. And this is a mistake that most finance influencers don't address. It's simply stopping and asking what do you want. You want to be your own boss? Have the opportunity to amass unimaginable wealth by the same time be extremely stressed and have very little free time. Or do you want to have more chill lifestyle where you're financially secure but you still have free time to spend with your friends and family? There is no wrong answers. But whichever path you choose, make sure it's what you truly want deep down. Here are two tools to help figure this out. First is journaling. Start recording every profound thought you have and take note when you're most happy. What were you doing? Second, take the Myers-Briggs personality test. It's a simple series of questions that will let you know what type of person you are. This test isn't going to define your financial goals exactly, but it will help you learn more about yourself in the direction that you should head towards for a fulfilling career and ultimately financial success. Here's the truth. The idea that you need to avoid all debt is not practical and not good financial advice. There is actually a distinction between good and bad debt. Bad debt can be stuff like car loans. A record 7 million Americans are at least 90 days behind on car loan payments. Other bad debt includes high interest credit card debt, payday loans, etc. Essentially, bad debt is a stuff that doesn't help you to make progress towards your financial goals. On the other hand, good debt is an investment that may boost your income or net worth in the future. In essence, you can imagine good debt as something that can improve your long-term financial situation. If you want to get rid of debt faster, then there is strategy. It's called the avalanche method. Think of how much money you can budget to pay off your debt every month. Make a list of all your balances and the minimum payments required. Now list them in order of lowest to highest by interest rate. Make all minimum payments on your balances and put any leftover money towards the balance with the highest interest rate. This is the most efficient way to get rid of your debt. Next, you need to understand the true power of your credit score and be able to harness it, like Thor's hammer because it could be the difference between wealth and poverty. Think of your credit score as a quick metric used by lenders to determine how likely you are to pay them back and the less risky they view you, the more money that you can end up saving. This takes us to our next financial goal which is probably the most important when it comes to achieving financial freedom. Now the easiest way for you to build credit by far is by using credit card and pay off your credit card bill on time every month. Because even if you miss just a couple of payments that can ruin your score, only use your credit card. If you actually have the money to pay it off, and only start with similar items like your gas or McDonald's. Next most important goal is the bare minimum. A bare minimum to learn about the stock market. When people hear the word stocks, they think about fancy degrees, fancy suits, drinking scotch. But this isn't true. It's actually easier now to get started than ever before. And the earlier you start, the better off you're going to be. Let's say you're 20, and if you contribute 500 a month into an SP500 index fund, with an average rate of return of 10% then in 30 years, your investment would be worth over $1 million. By the way, Index funds are super safe, and instead of investing in one stock that could go up or down with volatility of the market, invest in hundreds of different stocks. That will significantly reduce your risk and you can pretty much just set up and forget it. The next most important thing people don't ever talk about is that you need to start investing in yourself, in your education, because learning never really stops and it's possibly the best return on investment you can ever make. Just imagine, a single book that can cost maybe 10, that 10 investment could return over 1000 times in value. That book can teach you how to maximize your productivity to achieve more and how to negotiate better deals. Think of that book as a way to download 50 years of knowledge and experience from the author for just 10. And if you don't like reading, it could be free videos on YouTube like this one where you spend few minutes learning something new every single day. There is so much information out there, and all it takes is for you to have the drive and initiative to get started hopefully before you're 30. But it's not just self-education, it's also your health. Invest in a more healthy and active lifestyle. That can save and make you thousands later on in life. 
Next is understand your own personal financial situation and read just the goal accordingly. If it's completely unreasonable to save that amount of money and it just makes you really stressed and anxious, then save a little less. On the flip side, if this amount seems too easy, then raise the bar. Personal finance is personal for a reason. But here's actually what you can do to make more money and ultimately save more money. And it's creating additional streams of income before you're 30. Did you know that 65 of self-made billionaires have at least three different income streams? 40 have at least four and 39 have five or more. Relying on a single stream of income is riskier than you think because the moment a tragedy happens, there are 261 working days in the year, and if you could just make an extra $20 each of those days, you would have an extra $5,000 in your pocket by the end of the year. But the question is, how do you do that? Starting little side hustles is actually what can make your financial situation much, much better. It doesn't matter what you do. What matters is that you just start. The one determining factor of wealth is simply that you need to start normalizing talking about money with your friends, family, and co-workers. You want to make sure that the people that you surround yourself with have similar financial goals as yourself, or at least understand the position that you're coming from. Because if all of your friends love to spend money on silly stuff, but you are trying to save your money for the future, then you're probably going to spend more money. Then you are actually comfortable doing that in order to hang out with them. And that applies to your life partner too. You need to be on the same page or else you're going to have conflicting goals. There are two things in life that are unavoidable death and taxes and this is something you need to learn about your 30s unless you know you like giving your money away the easiest way to get started is with the tax advantage account something easy like a 401k check with your employer it's essentially a retirement account that you can contribute money to lower your tax income saving you a good chunk of money let's say you earn about forty thousand dollars a year and you get taxed 25 percent of your income so you would pay $10,000 in taxes. And at the end of the day, your take home pays now $30,000. But what if you could take home even more than that? You started contributing just 5% or $2,000 of your $40,000 income towards your 401k. That $2,000 were taking pre-tax from your income. And so to Uncle Sam it looks like you only brought home $38,000. That means you would only pay $9,500 in taxes. If we were to stay at the same 25 tax bracket, so not only do you save 500 in taxes a year, but you also have an additional $2,000 saved up in your retirement account for when it's time to party. There are a ton of other ways to save on taxes like a Roth RIA HSA account, tax loss, harvesting charities. But first, get comfortable with the tax system because it could save you millions of dollars down the line. Thanks for watching. Until the next time.